student-centered teaching isn't just turning students loose and letting them do whatever, that there are structured ways to do that. And so some of those structured ways are called models of instruction. There are many different models of instruction. One of the first ones is called concept attainment. The idea with concept attainment is you want students to gain an understanding and define a particularly important concept in your subject area for themselves. And this idea is based on work from Vygotsky, who studied the way that children learn things naturally. And so it's based on the idea that as children are encountering new things, they kind of start to categorize them and they will recognize, okay, this thing that people are calling a dog has four legs, it's furry, it's, its nose looks like this, it behaves in these ways, those kinds of things. And then there's this other thing that's also furry, has four legs, that people are calling a cat. And so you have multiple examples of what we call dogs and multiple examples of something else uh, that we call cats or all kinds of other things. And as a child goes through this process over years, a lot of times, they start to develop their own definition of what a dog is. The idea with concept attainment is that we can condense this often months long process into a class period um, or sometimes a couple class periods by presenting students with multiple examples and non-examples of the concept that we want them to learn. And so for your subject area, you pick a concept that's really important for your, for your student understanding and you prepare examples that you're going to show to your students to say, you know, this is what the concept is. You don't tell them what the concept is, but you show them these examples and you contrast those to non-examples of that concept. And as you're going through this process, students are identifying what attributes do the examples have in common that make them different from the non-examples. After they've gone through several of these, you ask the students to take the attributes that they've listed and to write a definition of what that particular concept is. Students will come up with their definition. It's probably not perfect, and that's totally fine. Because after that, you're going to present some additional examples and non-examples. And these are going to help students refine their definitions and to see where um, their definition maybe falls short or can be improved. And through that process, as a class, you develop a definition of that particular concept. And then at that point, you tell the students the name of the concept. The reason you wait until then is because some students may have heard of this thing before, and if you tell them at the beginning, their prior, possibly incorrect understanding of what that thing is, is going to interfere with their process of learning and understanding it in the way that you want them to and need them to for your particular class. At that point, you can also introduce a more formal definition. And it's helpful to have sometimes that more formal definition and the class's informal definition at the same time to create a deep understanding of what a particular concept is. By going through this process, students understand the concept better and they're more likely to remember it than if you just tell them, this is democracy, this is the definition of democracy. You can do this in any content area, especially for concepts that are brand new for students.